You could turn in your Bibles to Somebody wants Hi everyone, welcome back to Somebody Told Me, the podcast where we explore the voice of Christ and his church in the book of Psalms. Once. Oh gosh. Do you know why I do that? Because the killer song, Somebody Told Me. We could (laughs) have just called it Somebody Told Me and done that song instead. Yeah. But then there'd be no Shrek references, which would be a shame. Are you going to... Shall we do it? Yeah. Welcome to... Somebody once told me the podcast where we explore the voice of Christ and his church in the book of Psalms. Am I right? Yes, I think you're right this time. Right this time. So, uh, we're going to answer a question on this episode. Ooh. The question is, Sam, why was your mic control so bad in the last series of podcasts? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, right? If you listen to the Psalm 3 pods and you thought, what the heck is going on with Sam's mic control? Uh, yeah, I, I was just like, I was just forgetting I should speak into a microphone. We've gone for the uh, the handhold this time. Yeah. The freestyle. A bit, bit different. Yeah. And we've got a lovely artwork. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the original, the OG artwork that Aaron did in between <laughs> us. Brilliant. Oh, I should be sat on the other side, according to the artwork. Yes. So there we go. Right, shall I read... Uh, this is a question from Stephen, Katie Bartel's boyfriend. Don't know his last name. Do you know it? No. No, right. Well, oh, anyway. you should have probably found out that. <laughs> yeah, probably, before. but... Uh, that's That would mean me doing my homework before coming to the podcasts, which uh, I don't do. So, here we go. His question is, and I think this will actually be a good recap. Just yeah. if you've just joined okay. us on the podcast... You've been like, I've, I'm not going to catch up with all those episodes. <laughs> I think in answering this question, we'll cover some of the key things we've been talking about a lot. Mm. His question is, I think in essence, my question is, when you say Jesus prays every psalm, what do you mean? Is it that Jesus read the whole of the psalms as a man and prayed them then? Or in the sense that the whole Bible is God speaking or that whoever wrote the Psalms is firstly prophesying about Jesus before writing anything about themselves or God. As in, it's not the Messiah. I think he means, so it's just someone's writing them prophesying about the Messiah or God. I think the breaking down of the Psalms is cool, um, pointing out Jesus is throughout the Bible, but I'm struggling to see the difference reading the Psalms as something Jesus said makes. And I think that's because I don't get how Jesus actually praised them. Okay. Right. Where do you want to begin with that, Aaron? Number one, there's three things there. Is it this, this, or that? As, isn't it? Um, um, number one don't is, know. Go on. is it Jesus? Or does, you know, when, when he's on earth, he's picking up the Psalms and going, oh, these are cool prayers. Um, yeah, they're they're about me, so I'm going to pray them. Which um, is we're saying yes, yes, because the Psalms were written pre-incarnation, and yeah. he is picking them up just like he picked up the scroll and read from Isaiah, and sat down and like you know read them and sat down and it says these scriptures are fulfilled in your presence today. He, you know, mm-hmm. it's the same with the Psalms. Like he can pick them up and and pray them. But it, mm, if you, he is doing that, understanding that they are his words. Yeah. Um, they are written about him and for him, but they are his words. Yeah. Does that make sense? Is that? Yeah. I, maybe this is what this is the trippy up point. I guess. So the thing is, everyone, every Christian reads the Psalms and sort of gets like, oh yeah, these sort of express me a bit. But yeah. we're saying, uh, there's actually loads of times they don't express you. Yeah. Like, you know, um, they've pierced my hands and my feet in Psalm 22. 
Yeah. Like, okay, you can say like, well, metaphorically, I feel like I've been pierced. Mm. Well, that's fair enough. Okay. But the the thing is, the Psalms make the most sense in the mouth of Jesus of Nazareth in his days on earth. Yeah. Because we're saying the purpose of the Psalms is they were written, yes, I think as Stephen mentions, prophetically. Yeah. That's the third thing he says, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I think it's all, I don't know if it's all one sort of big, just what what's really, what are you talking about, guys? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, we, we are saying, like, whether it's David or the sons of Korah or Moses. Yeah. Who all write Psalms. There's all, what's going on is they are writing uh, the words that Jesus will pray on earth, just hundreds of of years maybe with yeah. Moses it's like more than it's like a thousand yeah a bit, you know Way beforehand in um but they're not primarily Moses's prayers recorded down although Moses probably yeah. in is in Christ so he is praying them but they are first and foremost Jesus's prayers regardless of when they were written yeah. and then he's saying but then Jesus would have read them so is he reading them then thinking oh yeah that makes sense I'll pray that I suppose he's thinking nitty gritty. How's this working then in Jesus's days on earth? Yeah. <laughs> That's, I, yeah. It, we, I don't, the hard, answer is, it? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, he grew he, up going to the synagogue. Yeah, he would have known the Psalms well anyway, but understood that these are, these are words for him to mm. express and pray, and they are actually about him. Yeah. Um. The, yeah, that, it's what, what's that one in Hebrews where it quotes the psalm? Psalm forty. Yeah, that's it. As yeah, a uh, body you've prepared for me. Where is that chapter ten? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at, if you ever look, Stephen and anyone else at Hebrews ten, verse five to uh, seven, it says, "Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said." Yeah. Colon, and then it quotes from Psalm 40. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Mm. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, here I am. It's written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. Yes. So it, that's telling us about the experience of Jesus. When he comes into the world, he reads the Old Testament scriptures, specifically, you know, this experience of Psalm 40 would have happened to Jesus, where he, he gets, these are the scriptures that testify about me, which is what he says in John 5, mm. 39 and 40. Um, and that God has given me this physical body, this flesh and blood body, um, so that I can do his will. And mm. what is God's will? It's that I would be a ransom for many, that yeah. I would suffer and die and rise on the third day to save people. So that definitely, he did experience that. Oh my goodness, these Old Testament scriptures are all about me. Mm. And so he might have naturally prayed the Psalms, but he also would have grown up reading them, singing them and knowing they're about me. They are my words. It's interesting in, in Hebrews, it says, on his days on earth, he said this. Mm. Even though those words were written way in advance of his days on earth. Brilliant. So verse 5, when Christ came into the world, he well, said, on his days on earth, he but said. It, but, but it was written words, down way before he came into the world for, for the saints to, to pray. Yeah. <laughs> so, so their understanding, and I think this is, um, this is where... We view the Old Testament saints as they don't know what the, what these scriptures were about, right? Or what you they mean they might generally been, think that. Yeah, people yeah. generally think that. But I think second, especially Second Temple Jew, in Jews, you know, after the exile, come back. Mm -hmm. Most of these psalms were a lot of the psalms were written in that um, period, and you know, in David's time as well. They understood the psalms to be prophetic and eschatological about the future. Yeah. eschatological king yes. like the true king yeah the messiah king yeah and they understood these words to be about the words of the messiah yeah um when he was to come mm. 
and that's yeah. what Hebrews is saying. So when the Messiah has come, on yeah. his, when he comes to earth, he says this. Mm. Um, but it's recorded in Wayne of Ours. It's, it's confusing, isn't it? Because it's yes and no. It's yes and yes <laughs> to the question, sorry. Yes, he's reading them. Yeah. Going, yeah, these are my prayers and I'm going to pray them. But they are also could have been, even if he didn't have the scriptures, his prayers, which weren't recorded in the Gospels, recorded in hundreds of years in advance mm. for us. It's for not benefit. either or, it's both and. Both and. That's the favorite one, yeah. saying of mine. That's, that, that, does that make sense? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, well, Stephen, let us know if it makes sense. I, I think so. Yeah, if you're wondering, like, I don't, how does this actually work? So does he first read them and then pray them? Or does he <laughs> pray them and then work out, oh, that's funny. I read, prayed that the other day. I just read it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't, don't think that. <laughs> all we know is, like, the, I think that's the clearest bit in the New Testament where it says, look at this experience. When Jesus came into the world, he would read the scriptures and go, hey, look, it's about me. Yeah. And I've come to do your will. You've given me this body so I can do your will. Um, I'm going to do it. And yeah, he would have understood the Psalms to be his prayers, you know. And you see that again on the cross. Psalm 22 is always good to have in your mind that Jesus prays, my God, my God, why have you forsaken mm. me as he dies? And when you read that Psalm, you're just like, yeah, obviously it's not David because his hands and feet were never pierced, but Christ's were. Mm. So, yeah. So, And then uh, maybe the third point of his question, if it's three points, is, well, what difference does it make when you read the Psalms saying, okay, they are, first and foremost, Jesus' prayers in his days on earth? So what difference does that make to me when I read the Psalms? What do you think? Um, Shall I say what I think? And then you you have a moment to think. Yeah. We always stand with the disciples looking at Jesus saying, Lord, teach us to pray. Yeah. And if you grow up in church, I think you assume you know how to pray. But we, we always are just with Paul actually saying, we don't know what we ought to pray. That's what he says in Romans 8. And you're like, well, how does Jesus teach us to pray? Well, he gives us this seven-lined prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Okay, and it's brilliant. It's great. And I can riff off it as well as just pray it. But, like, any more examples, Jesus, of your prayers for me, please? Like, I mean, it's, it's a really good prayer. Is there any others? And the, the Psalms just, yeah, we're do, letting the Bible do the work and tell us the Psalms were Jesus's prayers there's a number of occasions we see that yeah and also luther's point that oh clearly with the lord's prayer he is just extracting from the psalms yeah. um, I, I think that's a good point i think as well they, the saints writing the the psalms understood them to be the the, the prayers of the messiah to come yeah I, I think that's the most important thing is to see you know saints of old before the incarnation are like, these will be the words of our mm -hmm. Messiah King. Yes. And then Jesus comes and fulfills them and says yeah. them and prays them. Yeah, this is me. I, I, I totally embody all of that. Yeah. This, yeah. Not that the saints before Jesus couldn't pray them, but they understood them to be primarily about the, mm. the Messiah. Yeah. And what he would do. Um, and then they tag along. Yeah, you know, like I was saying with Lamentations, like, Lord, teach us to lament. Mm. Yeah, it is, Lord, teach us to pray in the Psalms, isn't yeah. it? And we're, we're listening into Jesus praying, and then, okay, we'll imitate that. We'll join you in that. Yeah, yeah. And it, there's a there's a way of looking at it, and I mean, we could go on about this, but like, if you want, Stephen, we, I could send you some stuff to read if you genuinely want to read yeah. more about this. But the technical term for this is prosopological exegesis that's impossible <laughs> <laughs> impossible logical and it's 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 the study of who's speaking mm. in scripture especially in the old testament where it's not clear you know the lord speaks and the lord speaks and it seems like there's two lords and it's like whoa and mm. especially in the psalms that you've got someone speaking to the lord and the lord sp speaks back he says this of me and stuff like that and it's good right let's get this straight who's talking to who 
Yeah. And we did this in previous podcasts because mm. Psalm 1 and 2 set it all up for the rest of the yep. Psalms. And it, <clears throat> the Father speaks to the Son, the Son speaks to the Father. Yeah. And it's identifying who's speaking. And that, that's what prosopological exegesis is. It just looks into who is the speaker. Who is the speaker. Yeah. Yeah. And I can send you some stuff on that. And, but that's where we're coming from. It's uh, That's the lens where we're using with the Psalms. Yeah. Um, and it, it's historically been used by, yeah, people from Spurgeon to um, Augustine. Mm. Um, Look at our picture. Look at the yeah. artwork. All of these guys. These like, guys. There's so many people. And I'm going to try and reference more of the church fathers and re- reformers and people because it is important to we're not just to making do that. Stuff yeah, up, we're not yeah. making it up. But it's a historical way of looking at the Psalms. Hopefully that helps at least a bit. And uh, if you're just, yeah, it's a refresher if you're listening along with us in the podcasts. Thanks for your question, Stephen. If you've got any other questions, anyone, send them in. Message me or Aaron and we'll try and do our best to answer. We'll catch you on the next podcast where we're going to launch off on Psalm 4. Somebody once told me you-